Hello guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to create effects like this that I'll show on screen using the newest glitch machine update. This specific effect is one that I posted a lot of when I was just showing the update like on Twitter and stuff and I said I would do a tutorial so here's that. This probably won't be a very long video because it's not that hard to set up but if you want to get started with glitch machine go watch the setup video which is the last video I uploaded and then come back to this one for how to create this effect. I go over the file types in the previous video, but for this one, I'm gonna load up the AET file. It just opens like a fresh copy of Glitch Machine, unedited for you to use. Before I start, the windows I'm gonna be using in this video are Properties, Composition, Effect Controls, and projects and obviously you'll need timeline as well also if you can hear it in the background my neighbors are setting off fireworks at 5 p.m for some reason sorry about that but the only other thing you'll need is the glitch machine presets script again i installed that in the last video but just make sure that's ticked in your windows list here so first thing we're going to do is go to the project tab go to input and we're going to change our input image so I'll just hide the glitch machine artwork. The image I used in that like preview artwork I showed you at the beginning is a render by Alex Schuper who puts 3D work on Unsplash so you can use it. Um, so shout out to him. I just used it as like a, a demo image and it ended up looking really good. So I'll leave that linked in the description if you would like to go and follow his work. But all I'm going to do is using the properties tab, scale it up so that I can see everything that I kind of want to be in my final effect. So something like that. Once you've done that, go back into the Glitch Machine comp and it'll update. Obviously this looks nothing like what we're going for. Don't worry, we're going to edit this. So in the project tab, click on where it says Glitch Machine. And then in the Glitch Machine presets tab, click on Clear All Effects. So it's turned everything off other than the input. And what we're going to do is come up to layer 9, which says Glow. Don't enable it, just load up your effect controls for that and just hide this one and come in and add in another glow. Set the threshold to 90, turn the intensity up to like 4 and then turn the radius up to like 100. You're not going to see any changes because we've not turned this on yet. And then back into effects and presets, if you just type in Gaussian and drag on a Gaussian blur and turn the radius up to whatever you want. All this obviously remains editable afterwards, so it doesn't really matter what settings you put in for now. And then just change layer 9's blend mode, so where it says glow, come past the comment where it says mode and change that to screen. Once you've done that, come back to the project tab, make sure you've still got Glitch Machine selected and then click on the CRT RGB preset. It'll give you this little warning, um, we don't need to worry about that so we're just going to press yes. And then you'll get the successfully applied script alert if you had it all right. So if you get another one that says they didn't do it or something failed or whatever, you need to literally have Glitch Machine showing grey in the project tab, so literally selected, and then just do that again and it'll work. So if I press OK now, it'll make some changes to the effect and they'll just take a second to render. You can see we've got like the start of this effect now. So all you're going to do from here is come up to the first layer in the timeline, which says Glitch Machine CRT Bend Control. Click on that, and then with your effect controls layer, you just need to adjust these settings to fit what you want, basically. So first thing I'm going to change is the angle. I'm going to change that to 90. It'll take a second and it'll render. I'm then going to change the threshold. So we need a slightly higher threshold. What threshold means is how bright does something have to be before it is included in this final render? So if we go back to the input, when you've got a low threshold, these pixels here, which we don't want to be included, are being included basically due to the low threshold. Threshold is just, the term threshold is just referring to how bright something has to be. So the luminance value of a pixel determines whether it will be included in our final result. Luminance being brightness. So if we set a high threshold, then only the brightest parts of our image are going to be included. If we set a low threshold, then it's going to include most of the image, regardless of like the luminance values in the pixels. You don't need to understand that, but I'm just telling you that's what the word threshold means when I use it in my work and my uh, effects and stuff in Glitch Machine and elsewhere. With that in mind, if I just go somewhere in the middle for threshold, you'll see that's probably a little bit too far. So we're going to lower that again and again and again until you're sort of happy with where that's at. You can then start changing the frequency. So again, just to explain what that means, frequency is literally how frequent the lines are appearing, how many lines are on screen. So if you go really high, kind of like the example I showed at the beginning, 
And then the next thing to edit is clarity. So the lower you go with clarity, the straighter the lines will be, basically is how it works. Now, due to the clarity slider being linked to a blur slider, um, most of the interesting patterns you're going to find are going to be between the 900 and 1000 range, because obviously once you've blurred something past like two, three, four, 500 pixels, a 500 pixel blur is not really going to have much more detail than a 900 pixel blur. So compare that to a 50 pixel blur. If you set it to 950, uh, it, this slider, when it's at a thousand, there is no blur being applied. When it's at minus a thousand, then there is like 2000 pixels of blur being applied. I recommend keeping it around zero for most of your work. So you get like this nice grid effect, but you can go higher if you want some more interesting shapes to come through and you can just turn it off completely if you want. So you can keep messing with both of those properties as well as the angle um, as much as you like, really. You'll see that some angles pick up some really nice color interpolation. So when I say interpolation, After Effects and like your GPU and CPU and your computer um, is like guessing or approximating the color result for a lot of this through the textures and stuff that are applied in Glitch Machine. If you click around, the color interpolation will change. So I'm on, I'm like just at the start of the animation. So if I move the playhead around, you'll see they, they sort of glitch a little bit. Um, so you can find like a nice angle for color if you want. You can also change the line type. So you can go to these two other lines that I rendered out. These are much higher frequency, so when you change the lines, I recommend lowering the frequency as well. Obviously, this is all personal preference, so you can go with whatever line, frequency, angle, whatever you want. I'm going to stay with the default lines, and I'm going to go quite high frequency. And I'm going to keep my lines like that so I get the nice color interpolation. So the next thing to do, or the next thing you might need to do, depending on your input, if we pull up the timeline again, we edited Glow Layer 9 before. The reason I said to do it before is because if you're doing it now, what you'll notice is when I make changes to this, they'll take a second to render because not only does it have to recalculate your Glow, it's got to recalculate how your new Glow interacts with this texture, that texture, this expression, this tin, this levels adjustment, blah, 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 everything else that's in Glitch Machine. So uh, I'm probably just going to lower the Glow threshold. So... If I turn that down a little bit, then I'm probably going to turn the radius down a little bit too, just so I've got some more white values coming through in the middle. And then you can mess with this as much as you like because uh, it all remains editable. Obviously, I don't want this video to be too long, so I'm just going to go with 62% threshold, 13 radius and 5 intensity. And then you can up the blurriness of the Gaussian blur as well if you would like. I'm going to reset mine to 29.9. So we've basically got the lines set up and the color set up that we want at this point. And all I need to do now is add the distortion that I showed in the original on screen at the start. So come to layer number 14, which is named glitch displacement and toggle that on. And then in the use for horizontal displays, just change this from blue to luminance and turn that up to whatever you like. 291 I've gone for, but I've just picked that at random. It doesn't have to be 291. Next, you're gonna to come to distortion displacement. Mine's at 100 right now. You can turn that up a little bit if you want. 179 I'm gonna go for. And then finally, just come to glitch machine controls, which is the second layer, and then you can hide your timeline again. So the distortion that we've just applied, again, regenerates per frame. Well, it doesn't regenerate, it's just different per frame. So if you skip around now, you'll notice that some frames like this one have tons of distortion. The frames I showed you at the beginning are basically frames where the distortion is just kicking in. So you don't want to go for a frame like this, like it might look cool for your image. I don't really like this as an individual still, um, but I'll definitely be able to find one where the distortion is just kicking in. It's not quite gone all the way yet. You've just got to click around until you find the exact frame that you want. If you're on a slow or older computer, you can, if you pull up the timeline, double click on the glitch displacement source file, and then pull the timeline down and zoom out. And you'll basically see that the way this is displacing our image is using two lines, one that comes down, one that goes across. So I'm looking for only displacement across, really, because a line across displacing that rib cage, you'll still be able to see that it's a rib cage, whereas a line going down, I just don't want that in mind. So you can skip around in here until you find a frame that mostly has horizontal lines 
or you can just turn off the effects multiplier and that will only give you horizontal lines. It won't give you any vertical lines whatsoever. And that means there's a little bit more um, frames for you to choose from basically. So I'm gonna go for this frame. I like this frame. This, if I look at this little timer here is 8.7 seconds. So if I now go back into Glitch Machine, it'll keep my playhead there. And if I pull this down now, you can see there's a little bit of distortion coming through probably not enough so you can come back to the glitch displacement adjustment layer and you can keep turning up that horizontal displace as much as you like so if i go for 1500 the only thing that might stop it from appearing is there is a wiggle expression on the opacity of the glitch displacement so if you click on this little arrow click on transforms arrow and then click on the opacity arrow then just click on this text that says wiggle and just delete that then click out of it. It'll be more responsive that way. I totally forgot that was there. So I didn't mean to include that in this tutorial, but there you go. So you can now tweak these a little bit easier. Now I've made those changes to how the glitch effect works in terms of distortion. So you can go for something kind of like that, which is similar to what was in my preview thing I showed you at the beginning. And then now if we come to the glitch machine control layer, which is layer number two, you can turn up the distortion intensity or you can turn it down for the other displacement map and you can adjust the glow and bloom for some other glow that's been added in. So from here, all I would really continue editing is which frame you're gonna pick, and then the line controls. If you want to though, you can also go and enable one of these alternative downscale effects. So if I enable the 1024 one, you can also enable the pre-glitch adjustment, which gives you a levels adjustment to edit, or you can switch the downscale to one of the other downscale effects as well. And obviously it'll downscale your lines. Um, once you settle on something that you like, so if I settle on this, you can file, save as, and save this somewhere that instances like these changes we've made to Glitch Machine. And then if we go back into the input now, I did the ribs for this one, but I also, you might've seen, I did the skull in the same style. So if I pull this down now and up the scale so that we've just got the skull showing and go back into Glitch Machine, the effect will sync to the skull and everything still remains editable all your, the line control stuff we set up and the glow and all that stuff, all still fully editable. You don't need to like redo anything. Uh, so you can now just go and apply this effect to as many images as you like. And once you've got the frames that you like, once you've got it set up, this one's maybe a little bit messy, but if I wanted to export this, just go to composition, save frame as file, and that'll export the frame like on its own. As well, once you've got this saved somewhere, I'm only gonna make this tutorial once. However, if you follow me on Twitter, you'll see that when I post stuff like this, I will include my setup. So like you can see here for this image, I've used threshold 0.46, clarity 626, frequency 88, angle of five and a glow strength of 39. So I'm only obviously showing you it on this skeleton, but if you follow me on social media, I'm gonna start including those numbers every time I post work like this, so that once you've watched this tutorial, you can just load up the file that you saved from this tutorial, copy in my numbers if I do something new with this specific effect, and you will get that effect from just my input, as long as you use this setup. So that's about it really. I'm gonna go back and render the ribs out for the thumbnail, um, and I might do a little before and after. If you didn't see in this little extras folder, there's a before and after comp, so now if I scale this, to be where I want it, kind of like this. Check that's okay. I'm just gonna add the wiggle expression back to my glitch displacement because I do kind of like that. If you wanna like impress your client, if you're doing something cool or if you just wanna share it on social media, if you go to the extras folder, click on before and after, pull up the timeline and then just drag in the glitch machine comp underneath the input and then move your playhead along, you'll see that it's just gonna animate like a reveal of before and after. So if you pick somewhere between two and three seconds, it'll be bang on halfway through like that. So yeah, I'm gonna go render all this out for the thumbnails. Um, if you want the animation version, you can of course send it to Adobe Media Encoder. But if I try to do that in this video, my computer will explode. So thank you for watching. Thanks for supporting Glitch Machine and my content on here. Um, I know I've uploaded a lot of Glitch Machine videos now, so I will like do some normal videos soon. I'm sorry if you can hear my neighbors who are setting off fireworks. If there's any other effects for Glitch Machine that you would like me to cover, let me know and I'll see you in the next video.